So you're on the League of Ireland Lives podcast with myself, Jamie Moore. Thanks very much for joining me. We've heard from Ollie Cal from the PFAI, as well as Aaron McInef of Shamrock Rovers and Keith Ward from Bowes. And now it's time to speak to Longford Town, Sam Verdon. Sam, how are you? Hi, right, Jamie. How are you? Not too bad yourself? Good, yeah. Good. Hanging in there. Yeah, thanks for having a chat. And we wanted to get the perspective of a first division player as well with everything that's going on. But firstly, we're asking everybody the same question. How is your League of Ireland life in lockdown? Um, I suppose probably the same answer as everyone else is giving you a miss in football. Um, it's a lot tougher running when you're on your own. Um, I'm lucky enough, my brother plays for UCD 19, so he's been kind of joining me in, joining in with me in the in the runs. But um, it's still tough and it's still uh, still still hard to motivate yourself to get up and go out and run on your own. But uh, ah, sure, that's that's the way it is. It has to be done. What type of program have Longford given you? Um, Darren, Johnny, and the lads have sent us on a program that's a couple of tough running sessions a week, then a couple of lighter running sessions, um, a bit of lower body work and a bit of upper body work. It's tough, like because the lads, some of the lads, like it's not everyone has a full gym in their house, so it's tough to, to be doing that. But uh, yeah, look, we're doing the best we can, and we're getting a couple of Zoom sessions in then on top of that each week, but um. Yeah, look, we're making best with what we have. Yeah, the Zoom sessions are something everybody is doing. And, you know, everybody has different variations on exactly what they're doing. Uh, but I'm sure it's nice just to be able to see the lads, even if it's only on a screen. Yeah, I think that's the that's probably the best thing they're getting out of it. I, I know it's, it's difficult to be able to do a full session just in that confined space what everyone's working with. But I think the main thing is just getting everyone together and having a bit of crack rather than the actual training itself. And... I'm sure we're all hopeful that the league will be back on in around the 19th of June or so. There's been a statement yesterday about different dates and, and that the NLEC are looking at different options about when it might start, if it might be later or behind closed doors and stuff. So like all the other players and coaches in the league, Sam, you're just watching from afar and hoping for the best when it's safe to, to get back playing. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, it's completely out of our control and the, the most important thing is the public safety. So um, I think the most difficult thing is probably not knowing when it's going to start. I think if you were to say to us, right, you're starting the 15th of July or the 1st of September, we could say, all right, well, at least you have something to work towards, but not known is the most difficult part. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of keeping your eye on the headlines and hoping that um, safety is the most important thing, like I said, but hoping that we can get back as quick as possible. And away from trying to keep fit and doing the Zoom sessions, what have you been doing to keep the brain active? Well, the usual Netflix and but um playing Call of Duty. Um but uh yeah, and I've college work to do as well. Had a couple of assignments and um I have exams next month as well, so just kinda of taking away at that, but uh they're long held days. What's on Netflix? Um Money Heist at the minute, yeah. So I'm halfway through season three, so um yeah, that's that's keeping me busy. Everybody's recommending Money Heist. I thought it was very slow at the start. I struggled through Series 1, but I'm now on Series 2, and it, it started to heat up, so it, it's worth sticking with. Yeah, and actually, the first episode I hated because I watched it in... Um, I actually watched it in English, and it was just annoying me that the, the lips and the, the voices were completely off, so I've done a bit of Googling and seeing that most people are watching it in Spanish with the English subtitles, and that's, that's definitely way better. I'm watching it with the English voices and the weird lips still. Yeah, no, it's no, and I, I was, I was like that before because I didn't want to have to like totally concentrate on what's going on, but it's actually not that difficult, and you find yourself picking up a bit of Spanish here and there as well. Yeah, see, if you get a WhatsApp or something, you want to read the WhatsApp, and you have to look at the screen if it's subtitles. But once you get through it, a few episodes in, the the lip sync thing doesn't actually, it's not as bad. Is it not? No. Well, no. I, I went to Spanish anyway, so. Yeah, and I actually flicked on for a few minutes in Spanish, and like. The sounds of their voices, like the main guy in is called the professor, and yeah, yeah. He, 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 the American voiceover has, or the English voiceover has, like an American twang, and he's a real Spanish person yeah. in the real thing, so it's weird, like. Yeah, 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 definitely. And you're also playing a bit of, uh, is it PlayStation or Xbox on uh, Call of Duty with a few of your brothers? Yeah, PlayStation, yeah, so playing with that, and then a couple of lads off Steam are on it as well, so. Keep busy. It's another way to keep in contact with people as well, so. Yeah, we spoke to Aaron McInef and Keith Ward earlier on, who are playing this uh, PA to House Balls.ie FIFA game tomorrow night. Sam, the reason why I wanted to do this podcast today, we spoke to the other lads, including Ollie Cahill. One of your former teammates at Pats, Conan Byrne, put up an interesting tweet during the week uh, just about the situation and that he's very happy a few years ago that he decided that away from football he was going to become a teacher. 
and he was able to have a full-time job away from football. He's, you know, close to the age now where he's going to retire as well. He's playing up north. You're kind of in your mid-twenties sort of thing now and you've done college. You're able to do a bit of work as well. You might just speak about, you know, the importance of that and why you took that on. Yeah, I suppose, actually, I was playing with Conan at the time that he made that decision and it's always something that stood out to me and I, he kind of made me realise, actually, this is something that you need to do. You need to find something to have after football and I suppose it took me a couple of years then to do it because um, it, I think I went to college in the September and I just left full-time football at Pats in the July. So that kind of made me realise right now is the time now is when you need to do something. So um, three years on now um, and I'll get my hopefully degree now in, in the summer. So it's definitely something that I would advise everyone to do um, because football is short and especially... When you're not a full-time team, you certainly need to do something. Yeah, it's something that even, like I'm managing Pats 19s and we're trying to emphasise to them about the importance now of even the lads who are trying to do their leaving cert and it's been delayed about the importance of getting that. So at least they, they have the option for college. But when you were listening to Conan, when you were still at Pats, you probably would have been, would you have even been 21 at the time? And like, uh, what clicked in your head? I probably would have been maybe 19 at the time. But uh, yeah, I came out of school and kind of went full-time into Pats straight away. So I never really went college other than doing the FAI fast cars and so yeah it was never really on my mind I just kind of wanted to play football and that was it but uh, looking at Conan and seeing what he had achieved but also what he was saying well football is not going to last forever so he was really someone that you'd kind of look up to and take advice from so once I seen him doing it it was definitely something that I knew that I needed to do down the line and then when I left Pats I just found that as the perfect opportunity to go and do that. And how did you put the wheels in motion from when you went from Pats full time to the first division, which meant training in the evenings automatically meant that you did have more time. Um, so having had a couple of years away from education, how did you jump back into it? Well, I actually, it was the year, I don't know if you remember, that the leave and serve point system had changed. Okay. So um, first of all, I got on to Ollie and he put me in touch with Griffith College because they have something, a link there with Griffith College. And... I was speaking to then the guidance counselor in Griffith College and she was trying to get me to do like a, a bridge course into a degree. But like I said, it was weird that the leaving serve points had changed and um, I had basically the leaving serve points to get me straight into the car into the course that I wanted to do. So I didn't have to do that bridge course, which was which was great. It saved me a year really. And um, yeah, I started that September and the course that I'm doing, it's it's not full time or it's not part time. It's called blended learning. So a lot of my lectures are online, and um, you can access them whenever you want, whenever you need, whenever you have the time. So you're not tied down to doing that like structured. You have to be in college this many hours a week or blah blah blah. You can work around football. You can work around work and so yeah, it's it's been great for me. And like I said, hopefully now this summer I'll finally get that degree. What's the course in and how do you find that learning online in comparison to maybe being physically in lectures at the moment? Everybody in school and college is learning online, but for you, you've been doing it kind of since the start of the course. Yeah, so that's kind of handy for me the last couple of weeks. It's just it's just been continuation of what I've already been doing. But um, I think at the start, it was difficult because it's not, you're not sitting in front of a teacher. You're not, you don't have to be there. It's more kind of self-discipline and right, I have to sit down and put this two, three hours in, whatever it is, and just sitting down and doing it, rather than actually having to go up and go to college. But um, no, it's, it's fine, you get used to it. And I would recommend people in my situation to do the, to do the same because it is it gives you great flexibility. And um, yeah, it's, it's great for, for, for what we're doing. And what's the course actually in? And, and what do you hope that it might bring you into whenever you decide to, to do that? Yeah, so it's a level eight business degree and just general business. So we're doing all different different aspects, account, marketing, and everything. Um, and I work with my dad, so he's got a printing business. So hopefully, throughout the, or down the line, it'll help me uh, maybe um, progress in here and see see where that brings me. Yes, and actually behind my camera, if I flick my camera around, there's actually a, a lovely calendar there of my late granddad, Pat, which uh, your dad's company did. Um, so you might just explain a bit about that. And, you know, 
the importance of of having something away from football that maybe you can you know use your brain in lots of different ways I suppose yeah it's like my dad's been great um, I'm incredibly fortunate that he is in the position to be able to employ me and also understand where I am in terms of football so getting off training and matches if I'm down the country or whatever it's it's great he can let me go early or, or give me a day off here and there so it's I'm incredibly fortunate that way and um, yeah so he has a printing business and prints everything really like you see in calendars pop-up banners um, architectural drawings everything so yeah he's been doing that for since he was 15 so um, it would be nice to be able to continue it on am I right? Yeah, and it's just beside UCD there as well, so lots of kind of work from yeah, we've actually uh, the moved. college too. Oh, we've have you moved? Okay. Yeah, we've moved, yeah, so we're out now in Park West, and just beside the Red Cow actually, so it's, uh, it's a lot handier getting here in the mornings anyway from all of it. Yeah, very good, and like when you have the football and you have the college, but then your dad has a business where you see maybe a future, that I'm sure is, is, is something nice to aim for, and I'm sure he's been able to you know, help you with all the tricks of the trade because you can learn a lot in college and a lot online. But I certainly found across what I've done that it's best to learn on the job and learn from the people who've been doing it. Yeah, no, it's it's great. He's taught me a lot, um, in work, in football, in life in general. But uh, uh, it can be a bit difficult sometimes. I'm sure he'll admit that as well. Being in work with him and then going home and he's still there, so <laughs> a couple of arguments, but now we're still here. And do you find that you know it's it's something that you're able to balance at the moment because at the moment football is off so I'm sure it's easier but you know when you did go back to pre-season with Longford and of course you had that short spell with Finn Harps too where you were up and down the road and stuff as well so how do you find all that balance? Um, I think it was it was more of a culture shock when I first started doing it now I'm used to it and I actually appreciate it more um, but when I first left Pats and then I got into studying and, and working, it was a big shock because at Pats it was just get up, go train and home and do whatever you want then for the rest of the day. Whereas now you're working, you're up early and you're working full day's work and then you're going off to train or you're going off to a game. So um, it's definitely made me appreciate it more and have a lot more respect for people who are playing in the league that are part-time and, and doing their full-time jobs. Yeah, it's something like, you know, at Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk, you know, the, the top clubs, the majority of them are able to, to play football and earn enough money not to have to do anything else. But, you know, maybe the other half of the Premier Division and certainly nearly all of the First Division people have to do what you're doing and, and work and play football and stuff. And, and it's something that, you know, a lot of the league does and, and you know, has to do really. And, and it's something that you kind of just jumped into. Yeah, um, I think money-wise, I, I would be surprised if anyone said... In my position, anyway, anyone who said that they're just playing football for the money because that's not the case. And I think sometimes people overlook that. And like most, especially in the first division, players aren't playing for the money. It's they're playing because they want to play. And uh, yeah, it's difficult sometimes when you're getting a bit of stick here and there. Players are getting stick, or the league even is getting stick um, with transfers and stuff like that. People don't appreciate that we're we're working just as much as they are and we're also giving up a lot of our time um, for um, very little reward financially um, so it is difficult sometimes when you see people criticising things like that and in terms of, of the season that we had the, the short season so far I suppose the highlight was that 1-0 win away to draw I think on the, the second game of the season you scored the winner in that game and it's just a shame that it had to stop but it, you know it looked like it was nicely set up in the first division for a hot race even early in the season. Yeah, no, definitely. And it will be uh, when it starts back again because we've got a couple of good teams draw that are obviously very good. Um, I haven't seen Galway, but um, they've signed some really good players, so I'm expecting them to be good as well. Um, obviously ourselves, Cabo will be tough as usual. So there's certainly a good few teams that will be up there, will be aiming for promotion. And then, um, yeah, we'll look. Hopefully when it all starts back, that we'll come out on top. And I know we don't have a magic wand to be able to wave and, you know, everything starts back the way it was on the 19th of June. As a League of Ireland player, Sam, what do you see, again, with the HSE's advice and the government advice and stuff, what do you see as the scenario that might see you playing League of Ireland football again in, in the future? Um, I suppose it's a difficult one. Like, I know the, the HSE and the government have put out the guidelines that 
um, no more than 5,000 people. The events with more than 5,000 people have been cancelled up to the end of August. Now, it's rare that there's an event in the League of Ireland, a game in the League of Ireland with more than 5,000 people. But there is still that, there is still that um, aspect of social distancing that will be required. So I know for probably most of the first division teams, um, the social distancing thing wouldn't be much of an issue because the crowds aren't amazing. But I know in the Premier Division, like if you go to Inchicore maybe or or even even Dundalk, like social distancing would be would, would certainly be an issue. But um, I just I can't see us playing football until until at least September anyway, um, which is like I said, it's difficult. It's the most the most difficult thing is not knowing when um, when we will be back. But look, like I said earlier. The public public health is is the most important thing. Yeah, very well said. And you know the talk of games behind closed doors and you know clubs being financially in big trouble as it is, and, and possibly to be able to get money from UEFA and FIFA. Would you be, you know, not a fan of that idea because no one's a fan of that idea. But it is something that could be realistic that you know games might have to be behind closed doors if it's financially viable. Yeah, look, that's. I would rather play a game behind closed doors than not play a game at all, but. I don't think that'll be up to us. That'll be up to the clubs because if they're not getting any gate receipts, they might not be able to, to pay, play, pay players or, or whatever. So I'm sure that won't be in our hands. Um, like I said, I'd rather play a game behind closed doors than not play at all. So that's that's my view on it. Yeah, and just on the last one, you mentioned September, and you know, at the moment people are aiming towards June the nineteenth, and and you know that's definitely an ambitious date. And I was only talking to someone yesterday and saying the same thing. I'd love if they said, right, it's September 1st, so everybody knows by September 1st, touch wood, hopefully, you know, the crisis will be over and people will be able to go about their lives in a somewhat normal fashion, even if there is some sort of, you know, social distancing. But it means then you could take a little break and then do maybe your mini pre-season before you get back. Whereas now it's kind of, if it's knocked back to mid-July and then August, it's, it's more difficult for everybody. Yeah, that, like I say, that's, that's the most difficult thing is not knowing when. If you were to say to us, right, you're back the 1st of September or... The first of October, you could say, right, well, there's something to aim to. Not knowing when um, is the most frustrating thing, I suppose, because we're out training, we're out running, and we have no real target or goal in sight. Like, we're just kind of running for the sake of it, hoping that this is all going to go away sooner rather than later. But, um, but it looks so, I don't think it will. Stan Verdon, thanks a million for your time. Back to work, and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, cheers, Jamie. Thanks.